My name's Jared with Lethal Performance, and I'm here in Sefner, Florida with my man Kelly Aiken of BMR Suspension. We have our 2018 Mustang GT up on the lift here, and what we're going to be doing is upgrading the rear suspension today. You saw the car did uh, pretty good at the track. Best 60 foot I had was a 1.73 when I ran the 1168 at 119 miles an hour. So I'm going to take over here and uh, take a look at some of the parts that we have, if you don't mind explaining to us what we've got and what sure. we're going to be doing, all right? Basically, we're going to do the, the basic items that pretty much everybody wants to do on these cars, uh, whether it's an NA car or you guys are going to end up putting a Whipple on there and pushing it pretty hard. Mm -hmm. um, so first and foremost, uh, our most popular product is going to be the Cradle Bushing Lockout Kit. Uh, this part's going to be a 45 minute install, uh, even for your average person. It comes with rings to lock out the top of the cradle so the cradle doesn't deflect when you go wide open throttle. Uh, you got the front, they're going to be thicker, the rear, and then on the lower bushings, uh, you're going to have these mounts that lock the bottom movement out of the cradle so it doesn't dip down causing pinion rise. These spacers are going to go on the bottom on the front mounts, so under heavy braking or uh, pretty much uh, any condition, it helps just stabilize it by removing the gap that's in between the bushing and the, and the washer. Uh, we're going to lock the diff movement out so you don't break driveline parts. Okay. These are real simple bushings. They go in the bushing voids. They oh, eliminate, yep, these are poly. We have billet aluminum and then we have uh, options for the race cars, full bushing replacements. Uh, these are a real simple modification. They're $59.95. Pretty much everybody gets these. Um, and then one of the, over, the most overlooked and the most important part is the bearing and the lower control arm. Okay. Without this part, you have a, a ton of geometry change, and uh, it's really hard to apply the power smoothly because when it, it's almost like a lower control arm on a solid axle car. When mm -hmm. you go wide open throttle, the wheels move forward because there's deflection. Okay. When these are in the front pivot point of the lower control arm, the wheels stay put. The only issue is is you have to take everything apart. That's what Colt's about to do. Okay. Um, you got to take the wheels, the brakes, disconnect the half shaft, the knuckle. You got to pull the arm out press the bushing out, press the new one in, put okay. it all back together. So it's a pretty tedious install. Colt's done it about, I don't know, 20 times. The theory is basically um, in the IRS cradle, you have the movement of the, the entire assembly that rocks. So first we want to address that. So the, okay. so the cradle's you know not moving. Then you have the differential that moves inside the cradle. That's what we're going to address the movement with the bushings. Uh, then the other products that we have here are going to be fine tuning. So we're gonna do the tow links. Uh, you know, these are a really nice piece. We're the only company that has the offset here. And uh, what that does is it keeps the geometry better during the suspension arc and the swing. Uh, we're gonna use these primarily to get a wider range of adjustment, but also we have lockout plates that go in the mounting point because the factory uses a, an eccentric bolt that turns that's offset. Okay. And what happens is like when you put the Whipple on there and you start getting good 60 foot times, that eccentric can slip. I've okay. had it happen on my own car before I put these on there. Uh, so we're gonna do those. Uh, and then also we're gonna do these new vertical links that we have. Uh, they're super light, they're super strong. Uh, you know, we make all of this, we design it, test it, and make it in-house. They're the only vertical link on the market that has the ability to service the bushings on the car. So okay. every other company, you know, if you yeah. need to grease the bushings, you gotta take the whole thing apart. Nobody likes a tattletale, Danny. Except, of course, me. Okay, this, so you've got it. boom, boom, you're done. Uh, these are nice because they're much more rigid than the factory piece, but they still allow for a little bit of compliance. You know what I mean? It's not, you're not locking it out completely solid. Uh, the best part about these is uh, they're 99 bucks. I it's a no brainer, that. man. Awesome. You know, made right here in our, our facility. So uh, we're going to put those on there too. Um, this is the best overall package for the average person, period. Got it, so like a, a guy just purchased a brand new 15 to yeah. 18 Mustang GT, yep. they wanna do the rear suspension, these are the components yeah. like, the, the, this is like where you should start. You sure, know, this sure. Is, this, this is it. Yep, the, these are the, these. this is the bread and butter. Um, you know, we have, as, as you know, uh, we've already got, BMR has seven second cars. Yep. We've got two S550s that have been seven, Sheldon Lewis, uh, and then uh, uh, Jimmy K, Palm Beach Dino, they just went sevens with a 6R80. Those cars are a little bit different because mm -hmm. they're making so much power that something like this 
Won't it, it, it'll rip or it'll deflect too much. Okay. So I have a whole different array of parts that I will okay. put on a car like that with different shock settings and mm -hmm. everything. I mean, that's that's next level. You know, okay. the average person doesn't do that. So what do you like? A uh, person wants to build a car, put a blower on it, we'll yeah. go go nines, go. You know, what I mean, low nines. Low at nines. what point? At what point do we switch from? this setup to the one you're talking about, let's say like, you know, the other cars run in the sevens and stuff. Well, that, that's a good question. Uh, from what I've seen, it's usually based on, it's a combination of things, but it's uh, a lot of times it has to do with really just the 60 foot time. And what I mean mm -hmm. by that is if somebody wants to go one, three, 60 foot, 1.3, mm -hmm. they can do it with this stuff pretty easily. Uh, as a matter of fact, I mean, there's a few people out there that do that with a lot of stock stuff on the car. Now, yeah. they're inconsistent. I see people yeah, yeah. online say, oh, well, you don't need suspension. I went 137, uh -huh. 60 foot time with stock suspension. But, you know, the next match, they blow the tires off it? or it yeah. unloads or whatever. And, and it's all about consistency. So uh, that is one of the biggest things. Uh, again, people overlook this stuff. Like with the tuners, um, you know, I could sit here and name them all, but there's no reason to. All the top tuners, they like their guys to have their suspension sorted out because especially with the 6R80 stuff, if they can get a nice clean pass, the data is good so mm -hmm. they can change it. If you're out there spinning with a 6R80 and inconsistent, Bad the tuners data. are, they're like, ah, I don't, I, I don't know what's happening because yeah. it's short shifting, it's doing this, it's doing that. Um, but to answer the question, it really depends on feedback from the customer. Okay. Because sometimes I'll have a customer say, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that, and I'm breaking parts. So I'll say, hey, you know, you're breaking your diff bolts. The, that's real common. Uh -huh. They break the bolts that mount the differential to the cradle. And I'll say the only way to really fix that is to mount it solid so nothing moves, okay. so you're not breaking bolts. Um, the two fastest Ford IRS vehicles on the planet which I already named, they're both in the sevens. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about those two cars is they actually both have our cradle bushing lockout kit with stock cradle bushing. That's awesome. So they're not using like our solid Delrin. Uh -huh. Now for a road course car, that's yeah, that. when I pretty much tell those guys instantly, I'm like, hey, the cradle and the diff, they need to be solid. That's why Ford Performance has their solid aluminum bushings and all that uh -huh. stuff. Um, that's a little bit different, and then we'll try to shoot for having compliance in different areas of the working part of the suspension instead of the actual chassis part of you know the IRS. So um, this this setup right here, it, it can go well into the eights. Okay. And it can go well. That's into, quick. It can go well into the this. This is actually a very similar combination of what the first time I went 1.260 foot in my blue car. This is pretty much what I have on it. So. What has happened now on your car is this diff, this diff slipped and it's and it moved up on the bushing. When they assemble so these, so that's the bushing. That's the, the, the is that part that of the little protrusion is the is the bushing. Oh, okay. it's a little it's so it's so you align it properly when uh -huh. you when you put the bushing. Okay, so this part mounts to this. Well, if that is sticking out like that, that means the diff has shifted. So what that means is you've got the clamping force in this bolt. Uh -huh. And so now when you race your car and stuff, the diff is gonna move up and down. Now we're gonna fix that with our yeah. diff bushings. All right. But this is a telltale way for somebody to just get under their car and see if they've had this happen because if they do, they're gonna break these bolts. So this is the telltale sign on the back. See how that's centered and it's actually up, kind of. But you're looking at the relationship of this bolt to this aluminum. See how it's it's kind of yeah move uh -huh. yeah. but look over here see how it's sunk it's down and down, down yeah. and out that means that in the back it's shifted we're gonna put sleeves in there to fill the void okay we're the only company that does that so we're gonna be able to put sleeves in there so it stays centered and it doesn't shift like that so your differential is in a different position than it came from the factory basically that 469 first gear in this thing must really be hitting this thing right. but you can see so like these bushings. They have a lip that sticks up with metal. It's real, th it's real thin rubber with metal. So there, there, there's, a, see that piece of rubber there? Mm -hmm. Where you can see that, that, you can see the witness mark on it. Where it's slamming against the chassis. So that's how much your cradle's moving. So hold on, this, this is actually see hidden. that little yeah. half moon in yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. That little black half moon? Uh -huh. That's from that that that's a that's a limiter. That this rubber right here is a limiter. So it's designed to where the cradle can only move that far and it stops. Well, when it's stopping, it has a witness mark on the chassis. Yeah. See the witness mark where it's hitting that rubber of it sticks. And that's the not normal. Uh, I don't see it on the 15 to 17 cars like that. 
I mean, that's, that's, that's it's smacking, moving. like yeah. hard. Yeah. I got, uh, I brought some bushings out here so you can understand. It's kind of hard to see when the dip's on the way. So we have a hardware upgrade kit that helps eliminate some of the movement that you guys took pictures of earlier, how the, it, the diff was misaligned. Mm -hmm. It slips, it loses its clamping force. So the rear bushing, um, you looked back there and the bolt was off-centered. You could see that it had moved in relationship to the bushing. We're the only company that has this simple little piece, which fills the void. So basically, here's a stock size bolt. It goes in here. Look at the void. Yeah, there's a lot of play in it. What has that got to do with it? Back off, man. I'm a scientist. So it causes a couple different things. It can cause the diff to move, which changes the pinion angle, which causes vibrations and breaking parts. And then the other thing is um, when you load this car up and you launch it, it wants to slice that bolt. And it's happened to tons of people. I've had a lot of people have that happen. It just slices it, right? Just like that. So then we have this piece that just goes in there. Slides right in. Now this is damaged on the front from, of course, us abusing parts, but uh, it's damaged. It's not, but it'll sit flush. And then look. There is no play then. Yeah. So. Diff will stay centered. I mean, you can, you can slide it through the hole, but you go, know. go to town with it. I yeah, mean. go to town. Uh, so that's it, man, in the rear. We use uh, this hardware upgrade kit. I recommend everybody that does the diff pushing stuff get the RH-17 just because it's better hardware, uh, it's stronger, and it also comes with those aluminum sleeves to help. Uh, other hardware upgrade kits on the market, um, they just give you bolts. Awesome. You know, so, uh, the front bushing, you take a real quick look at this. It's a little bit different design. It's threaded. So the way this works is this faces the, you know, the front. Here's the front of the car. Here's the rear of the car. Here's the diff. The diff lines up the diff ears that, uh, that you saw that I broke on the blue car. Uh, those attached to this bushing. Um, earlier when we took some pictures, I was showing you guys how to tell if, if the mating surface, if the, if the clamp has been compromised. And the way that you can tell that is this part will stick out. So when you're underneath the car, if you see this part sticking out mm -hmm. and you can feel it, then basically that means that your diff has moved up and it stayed in the up position. So you can loosen that diff bolt and your diff will Drop fall down. down and it'll be flat again right here instead of this piece hanging out. Um, for this, what we do on the hardware upgrade kit, it's kind of hard because we're limited by the factory's design. Now on your car, uh, if Colt has time, I want him to do a through bolt design that's gonna put the shear where the bushing and the diff meet. You really want it to be on this part of the bolt instead of this part of the bolt. Okay, the shear strength is like 70% yep. more right here than right here. So uh, the way that you can do that is you can actually just ream those threads out with like a 9 16 or an M14 drill bit. And then you just run a bolt from the front and then you put the nut on the backside and then you have, so basically you're gonna have a, you fill a, a shank Mm -hmm. right where they meet instead of having thread. That's what we're gonna try to do if we have time on your car. Okay. And to do that, you just lower the front of the cradle down as much as you can, and then you pry it down, and then you try to drill through it. Okay, um, we noticed that on the passenger side, the that being able to feel that nub, yeah. and then on the driver's side, it wasn't as much. Is that because the way when the torque? Yeah, that's exactly why. So think about this. Uh, you had your, uh, if you, you know, the, the diffs here, you're looking, towards the front of the car. Mm -hmm. Remember the passenger side rear was sunk down. Okay. And the other yes, side was, was sunken up. Yep. It was like this. Mm -hmm. So you, you have torque rotation force. Got it. Now it can be other things, like the torque wrench worked better on that side than it did that side. I mean, uh -huh. it could be a culmination of things, but usually on these cars, the way it works is like they break opposite bolts. Uh -huh. So they'll break a front bolt and break a rear bolt, or they'll break, you know what I mean? It's always, if you watch a video of the way the diff moves, it'll move evenly. Okay. But what it's really doing is it's it's moving like this. You know what I mean? Or under a very uh, mm -hmm. an op opposing load, it'll move like this. So. Is there more stress on that driver side? Yes. Like basically, that's why the driver side yes. half shaft for us broke. Yes. So, going over GoPro video under car launching, and I've done it on my own car. I've done oh. it on. Uh, uh, I got a customer, Robert Ball. He's got a, a low 10 second NA S550, he hits the tires really hard. Uh -huh. It's so cool because it's actually, it's the opposite of a solid axle car. And what I mean by that is it always hits the, the rotation of the drive shaft mm -hmm. and then the ring and pinion, it hits the driver's side tire the hardest. Okay. It's, 
So that's why a solid axle car goes like this, yeah, because yeah. it's lifting that side of the car up. Got it. On the IRS car, it hits that tire harder and quicker and at first initially. So what it does is it squats it first. So it lifts the opposite side tire. So if, imagine being at the drag strip and you're watching somebody launch and they actually lift the passenger side tire up. They go the opposite way that you usually yep. see a car roll. That's what they do. Okay. They really do that. And then on the shifts, under car video, you on the shifts, you actually see when you monitor the suspension. As a matter of fact, if you monitored your magnetic ride suspension on a gear shift, the driver's side actually squats more than the passenger side because okay. it's hitting the tire harder on the shift. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool pretty how that works, huh? Well, knowing all the stuff too, and being able to, yeah. like you said, put the GoPro videos yeah. to use. I mean, this is how you improve your parts. Yeah. It's pretty sophisticated for a bunch of half ass mountain boys. So. so awesome, man. Well, listen, I mean, you've done a wonderful job with the parts and stuff like that. Let's let's change subjects here a little bit. I think our fans, everyone watching wants to know what's going on with the, the coins, the Bitcoin, the, the XRP. Where are we going, man? Come on. Are we up? Are we going down? Are we going down? I'm messing with you. Yeah, I mean, it's just grateful to be up here with you guys, man. Glad uh, to come up and have a good time. And looking forward to uh, having a beer with the crew once we're done. Sound like a good plan? Yeah, it sounds good. As, awesome. long, as, the, as long as you're covering the tab, we're good. <laughs> we're good. Yeah, well, they're in the fridge, ready to go. So once we're done with the install, <laughs> we're going to celebrate. Looking good, Kelly. You good? We good? Yeah, I'm good. See that? Look at that, bro. Look at that. We're some some good looking motherfuckers here, right? Over at BMR. Yep. Anyways.